If I throw a ball vertically upwards, it's pretty natural for me to expect it to drop back into my hand at some point thanks to gravity. Such motion under the influence of gravity is known as projectile motion. When looking at projectile motions, we need to make two assumptions. Air resistance is negligible, and gravitational acceleration is constant. We can approximate it to 9.8 meters per second squared. From this information alone, we can plot our first graph, an acceleration time graph for this particular projectile motion. Since the ball's initial motion is upwards, let's make it the positive direction. The acceleration due to Earth's gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. We have to put a negative sign here to show that acceleration is acting towards the Earth against the ball's motion. On the graph, it's simply a horizontal line in the negative region. To draw a velocity time graph, let's start by thinking about when the ball will have maximum velocity. I apply a force to throw this ball upwards, so the ball must have maximum velocity the moment that it leaves my hand. At the height of its trajectory, it must be stationary momentarily so that it can change direction and come back down. So it must cross the time axis at some point when the velocity is zero. We also know that the time for the ball to go up is equal to the time it takes for it to come down. The graph will end somewhere here. On a velocity time graph, the gradient represents the object's acceleration. Since acceleration is constant and is negative, the gradient here must also be constant and negative. It has to be a straight line crossing these two points. This region here is showing negative velocity because the ball is traveling in the opposite direction to its initial motion. And this is the point that the ball reaches its maximum height. For a displacement time graph, the time of flight must be the same as our velocity time graph, so the graph ends here. Its maximum height is when velocity is zero, right at the top of its trajectory. At the start, when the ball is still in my hand, displacement is just zero. At the end of the flight, the ball comes back to my hand, so that displacement is zero. I'm going to join these three points with a smooth curve, and then I'll explain why this makes sense. The gradient of a displacement time graph represents velocity. We know that velocity is decreasing in magnitude, so the gradient of this part of the graph must be decreasing, getting less steep. On this side of the graph, velocity is getting bigger in magnitude, so the gradient is getting steeper, but in the negative direction. Here are the three motion graphs for an object thrown upwards and then experiences free fall.